Okay, Notion does not have pop-ups, but what if it did have pop-ups? I might have created an abomination here, but it is amazing. <laughs> Just look at it. You can click on a button and then get a pop-up and then do some stuff in that pop-up and check some items off and then you have a next step and then a next step and maybe go back or go back again. And you have this magical progress bar on top that moves and stuff. And then you can move and move. And then at the end, a project appears. It doesn't actually appear right now because I haven't implemented that. I just implemented the damn pop-up, which took forever because it is super impractical, but it is a cool idea with Notion. So uh, to get something like this up and running, we're doing the nastiest and weirdest hack ever. So keep that in mind. This is not neat and not practical, but it is cool. And it doesn't use anything besides Notion. It, it has no part, third party tools, just the Notion buttons and some black wizardry and duplicated pages and all that. So how does this work? Uh, if you open up this button, you see that it only does one thing and it opens uh, a specific page in center peak. The center peak part is important. What it, what it means is, uh, and what I discovered, which I didn't know before, is that if you open up several windows, one next to the other using center peak, which typically never happens in you know practical situations, they override one another. So what I actually doing is when I click new project, I open up this in center peak. And this is just a page, it's nothing special. But when I click here, I have a copy of the page. It's the same page, but this this button here is checked. This is the only difference. So if I unlock this and I locked all of them, and I actually made this work both ways because I'm very uh, particular like that. But um, so this page here is now unlocked. And if you click on the button, oh wait, this is this is very much locked. Wait, wait. Let's unlock this, as I said, Notion, unlock the page, thank you, cool. So if you click on this button, you see that it actually opens up a page with the exact same name. Why is it the exact same name? Because otherwise this, this thing changes and I didn't want it changing. Uh, but you can write some human text up there, makes it way easier to do it. Uh, but uh, what it does is that it actually opens up a copy of this page that has this exact same button, but I changed the icon to a checked one. And if you want to use this ridiculously complicated approach to do the checkboxes, which I do not recommend, uh, you can uh, make every single checkbox work. I only made the first one because I didn't want to spend 15 hours on this. Uh, but uh, you can also make a discard button and you can also make the next buttons in the very same way. Now, what this does is I just copy and pasted this page a bunch of times. When I copy and paste it, I added this image here. It's an image that I created in Canva. So if you open up Canva, you'll see that I have this image and I just created this simple progress bar and I just filled it up in different amounts by using a rectangle that I resized, nothing super fancy, exported this, and then I just slapped a different, different field version on the top. Looks kind of nice though. Uh, I, I made sure I used the exact same title and then I used uh, some wizardry here to make this thing look a little bit different so it's fancy, nothing super special. Now, this gives us the, a very functional pop-up and we can actually make this pop-up useful. Right now it is not, right now it's a meme, it's a joke. But you can make something like that useful and this is why I started building this. But I figured this would be more fun to share this way. So how do you make this thing useful? To make this useful, here, first of all, you get rid of the checkboxes. Making those checkboxes work is a massive waste of time. It's going to take forever. Uh, and what you do is, as you click this new project, you will, uh, here I'm in my project uh, uh, table. What I will do uh, to make this functional is I'll go to my properties and go to my status. Here I have my statuses for projects, They're very normal. And I'll add a new status, which would be um, in, setting up, for example. And this setting up status is going to be special. It's going to be orange, so it is very visible amongst everything else. And I'm never actually going to use this. Like this is nothing that I'll actually set up manually. This is going to be use useful because when we click this button, we can actually create a new project. So we can uh, 
well, let me note this again. So we will add a new page in the project database. We'll uh, call it new project, for example, and we'll also set the status to income to setting up. This is important because what this allows us to do is when we click the new project button here, we can have meaningful options. So for example, uh, let me see. Uh, let's see the properties. We can have the uh, priority, for example. So we can set those different buttons when, it, when we click this to set different priorities. So we, this can be low priority. Uh, actually, let me not edit this one because this one is a checkbox, but this one can be low priority. Uh, this second one can be medium priority. And the next one should be medium rare. Ha ha ha. So funny, Jordan. You're amazing. So funny. I know. Thank you. And this is high priority. Cool. Okay. So we'll have three different priority buttons. And now what we can do, uh, now we are not going to open up uh, a different page. We're going to find edit pages in projects. And because we created this temporary status, instead of editing old projects, we can edit the projects that are currently setting up. And because we're editing those setting up projects, we can change them in some way. So we can take the uh, priority field and set this to no. And we can repeat the exact same process for all of them. And what this will do is because we're only using this specific field, the setting up field, we're only using it, never for anything else. We're only using it for one reason only for this button here. And by the way, this is not something that will work with teams. If two members of the same team do this at the same time, you get multiple projects set, set, getting set up together and it's going to be a massive mess. So keep it in mind. This is fancy. This is cool. If you want to have the coolest Notion dashboard, this is one of the ways you can achieve something super unique, but it's not something that I would recommend for teams. So um, unless you do all of your planning in one day. So we should click this low priority button that actually edits the projects and it here you can see how this can get wrong and i'll go to that in a moment ne next we can do this the same thing with different properties for every single version and i just put some random uh, titles here so i can illustrate the process and you can see that this can be actually kind of slow because we're opening new pages and then the finish button let me unlock this as well so for the finish button we're going to do something very similar but we're going to do Take the edit pages in projects. We'll take the projects that have the status that is setting up, and we are going to edit the status to backlog. That means that when we click the finish button, every single project that we just configured is going to become a new project. And those just edited, uh, the, those are hidden here. But if I show the, no, this is the priority thing. Uh, let me just duplicate this. I haven't finished this page, so we can see that the, uh, this is not perfectly organized, but we will fix that real quick. Status, it will not be in progress. The status will be backlog. Cool. And now we can see that we have a bunch of backlog projects and we have two, not one, but two different projects that are named new projects. The, the automation just created both of those at 8.26 at the same time. Uh, edited them at uh, 826 because I clicked the button twice. I clicked it for for the first demo and then for the second. This is one of the problems. When you start setting something up and you just forget about it, this is going to uh, to make things a little bit messy. If you want to fix that as well, because this is also a fixable problem, you can create another status that is not going that is that can be cancelled, for example. So I can edit this button. And I can add a step that says edit pages in projects. And I will edit every single page that has the status of setting up that I didn't finish because I did something else and I got distracted. And I will change its status to canceled. What would that do? And this is very important. This needs to be first. If this is second, this button is not going to do much. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're taking every single unfinished edit of a project and we're set, setting this to a canceled project. And then we're creating a new in project that is in the process of setting up. And then we can continue setting that unique one single project. 
What that does, it has one negative side effect. Of course, it's going to just create a bunch of canceled projects as you use this database. As you use this button, as you click it, you're going to get more and more and more canceled. Uh, like every single mistake is going to create one canceled project, which is not perfect, of course, but uh, a way around that is just create a view as I did with the backlog. Let me just duplicate that. That would be canceled projects. And then in the filter section, we'll just filter it to canceled and not backlog. Currently it's empty. Of course it's empty because I haven't done anything. So I create this and then I close it. That creates one pro uh, one uh, a, one project that is currently setting up. You can see that wait, I just misclicked here and made this more confusing than necessary. So by clicking this button, I created this new project that, that is currently setting up. And I added this as a visibility filter here so we can see them. Now, this is a new project that I started setting up, but I never finished. If I finished the last button of this uh, top up would have be, would have made this into the, would have put this into the backlog category, which it didn't, meaning that this project is unfinished. And I'm never going to finish it because I'll never find it unless I create a random view like that. So when I click this again, you see that this project, which I'll rename to look here so you can see it. But if I click the button, this is going to become canceled and then I'll create a completely new one to set up. So I click this and you can see that this look here project is now canceled and the new one is in setting up. The, as many times as I click it, the process will repeat. I only have one project that is setting up if I click this button, which is very handy, which is exactly what we need. So what you do is you remove this. This was a hack. You remove this and you can have a table that only shows canceled projects. And once in a while, you can go in that table and just get everything and delete it. It's a manual cleanup. You can automate this with Zapier, but if you don't want to use an external tool, that's what you do. And yeah, this is how you can create a pop-up that has multiple steps that is kind of amazing, only using Notion. There would, would have been a better way, but unfortunately, buttons are not too functional right now. They definitely need a delete per section, and they definitely need a couple of other things to, to make them fully functional. But even with their current functionality, which is not that much, you can do a lot of cool things. So this is one of them. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, stay awesome.